Flight instructors can often be confused with wind-up dolls, those toys that when you pull the string say one group of canned phrases, things like more right rudder, use your feet, and make small corrections. One thing I always find myself doing is reminding students to look out the window. It's easy to focus on the inside of the cockpit with all those instruments staring back at you, telling you different things, but so much of good flying involves using outside references. Let's have a look at the basics. Leveling off from a climb, we want to maintain 2,000 feet. We'll apply forward pressure on the stick to pitch down, but it's not immediately clear where to pitch. Make an initial guess at how far to pitch down, and use as a reference how far above a certain point on the aircraft your horizon appears to be. It could be the top of the glare shield, such as two or three fingers above the glare shield, or it could be the compass if it's above the glare shield like this, such as having the horizon sort of bisect the compass dial. But you're looking for the horizon reference that allows your altimeter to freeze at the altitude you want to maintain. To do this, you're going to be looking out the window about 80% of the time, changing your horizon reference with control inputs for pitch, while you periodically check the altimeter to see if your input is allowing you to hold altitude. If we dip above or below our reference point, you'll notice the change when you have a look back inside and see that the altimeter is showing a climber descent. Some students will reference the vertical speed indicator, which makes sense because it's designed to show our rate of climber descent, but the VSI is a lagging indicator due to how it works mechanically. If we pitch up and down aggressively like this, you can see that the VSI takes a bit of time to catch up with what's actually going on. This effect is even more pronounced in a real aircraft because the needle itself will be affected by abrupt changes in momentum. Just remember that 91.205 requires an altimeter to be on board, but says nothing about a VSI. Just reference your altimeter. Now, I haven't mentioned where exactly the horizon should be relative to the glare shield or the compass, and this is because the positioning is highly dependent on flight conditions. Here, the horizon should just about bisect the compass card, or be perhaps two or three finger widths above the glare shield. But this will change if any conditions change. First of all, it depends on how high or low we're sitting in the seat, so taller or shorter pilots will have different references. Also, air density affects pitch angle. Recall that in less dense air, we need a higher angle of attack to produce the same amount of lift. So to maintain altitude when the air is less dense, such as it is at, say, 8,000 feet, we'll need a different horizon reference than we did closer to the surface. Again, it's all just a matter of guess and check. Figure out what the proper horizon reference is to hold altitude, and then try to maintain that. Finally, the speed you're flying has a big effect on horizon reference. So far, we've been flying at cruise speed, but as you know from slow flight, when we bring the power back and trade airspeed for altitude, we need a higher pitch attitude to maintain altitude, so our horizon reference is completely different. This last point that our speed and pitch angle can be correlated can be very helpful on takeoff. If we want to climb out at our Cessna's VY speed of 75 knots, we can rotate and then pitch for an attitude that we think will give us 75 knots. In a pitch-up attitude like this, we may not be able to see the horizon out in front of us, so we may need to use the side of the glare shield where the horizon hits it, or pick a cloud to focus on. If the horizon or cloud moves down, we'll be slowing down, and if they move up, we'll be speeding up. In this way, making the horizon your airspeed indicator and then simply checking the real airspeed indicator for confirmation allows you to keep your head outside the cockpit in a critical phase of flight. Get in the habit in your VFR flying to keep your head outside as much as you can. If you want to keep your head in all of our great training materials, check out the Flight Insight Ground School courses on offer today at the link here or in the description.